Armando Hasurungan Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe. Join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook at Hasurungan. Please like. And here you can also ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things, including your artworks, or send it to me, please. And you can also please change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. These series of videos will look at the immune system as well as the lymphatic system to some extent. And so I named these series of videos the Immunology Map because we're concentrating predominantly on the immune system. And so to study the immune system, we have to know the, about the immune cells. Where do they come from and where do they go? So in this video, we'll concentrate on the immune, spell, in, immune cells specifically. And to learn about the immune cells, we have to start from where they came from, which is the bone marrow. So before looking at the main big map, we're just going to draw uh, a small map and look at the overview of what we're actually going to learn today. So the bone marrow, we have what's called stem cells. And these stem cells produce precursor or immature leukocytes, the white blood cells. And once these uh, white blood cells are there in the bone marrow, they will leave the bone marrow into the bloodstream over here. And the leukocytes will migrate to different areas, different tissues, for further maturation or for further activation, for example. And for an example of this is the precursor T cell, which matures in the thymus, and the immature B cell, which goes to the lymph nodes to become activated. Now let's look at the big immunology map now. Remember, the previous diagram was just an overview to see what we're going to learn in this video, this part one. So we begin with the bone marrow, where the leukocytes come from. The bone marrow is important. It's part of the lymphatic system. And it contains cells known as the pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells. And these cells, these pluripotent stem cells, the, these cells are the ones that give rise to the immune cells, including red blood cells as well. Um, what what happens actually is that these pluripotent stem cells divide to produce two types of cells first. It divides to produce either the lymphoid progenitor cell, which later will mostly give rise to cells part of the adaptive immune system, or the pluripotent stem cell can um, divide to produce the myeloid progenitor cell. And the myeloid progenitor cell will later typically produce immune cells which will be part of the innate immune system. So now for simplicity, let us begin um, with the myeloid progenitor cell and what these cells can give rise to, can divide and give rise to. So firstly, the myeloid progenitor cell uh, can divide to give rise to what's called an erythroblast. An erythroblast can later give rise to a reticulocyte. The reticulocyte will then leave the bone marrow and circulate in the bloodstream, where later on it will mature to become an erythrocyte or a red blood cell. And a red blood cell is important for our body because the red blood cells, the erythrocytes, is what carries oxygen, transports oxygen to different tissues, and removes carbon dioxide from our body to be exhaled out. The myeloid progenitor cells can also divide to produce what's called a megakaryote blast, which will later give rise to a megakaryote. This megakaryote will actually still stay in the bone marrow, but will secrete um, molecules known as platelets, and platelets play a critical role in the immune system in that it is important in initiating hemostasis and repairs of tissue, for example. And they circulate all around our body, by the way. Before I continue, it should be noted and stressed that I'm not including all the names of all the types of cells that will give rise to um, each of the immune cells. I'm only including the names of a couple of cells um, for simplicity. Anyway, continuing on, the myeloid progenitor cell can also give rise to what's called the myeloblast. And the myeloblast can give rise to a variety of cells, a variety of cells. Um, and these variety of cells include uh, a group of cells known as granulocytes. And granulocytes are, interest, are special because these are the cells which contain granules, hence the granulo before the site. And the three granulocytes uh, which will be produced in the bone marrow are the band basophil, the band eosinophil and the band neutrophil. Other cells that the myeloblast will produce that is not a granulocyte is the mast cell precursor and the pro-monocyte. Whenever a cell has a precursor or a pro within it, it means that it's not yet that particular cell yet. 
So for example, the mass precursor means that it's not a mast cell, but it will, will become a mast cell. And the pro-monocyte means that it's not a monocyte yet, but it will become a monocyte. So what will happen to these cells, or what will become of these cells when, once they leave the bone marrow? Well, the band basophil will become a basophil once it enters the bloodstream. And the role of basophils is to promote allergic responses, and they are important against, uh, for defense against parasites. The band eosinophil, similarly, will become an eosinophil. And the eosinophil role is that it kills um, antibody-coated parasites, essentially. So they're important against parasites. The band neutrophil will become a neutrophil once it enters the bloodstream. And the neutrophils are the fast-acting one, and they, and they essentially go into the site of inflammation or site of damage the quickest. And it's the most abundant uh, leukocytes. Neutrophils are also known as uh, polymorphic leukocytes because they contain uh, many nucleuses, three. Now, these are the three granulocytes. And, and as you can see, where, when in the bone marrow, their granules are, are not present yet. But once they, they're in the bloodstream, they have these granules. And so they're ready. And these granulocytes, they typically circulate through the bloodstream and essentially wait for a particular response or uh, chemicals to signal them to go to an area where, they're, where they are needed. Now the non-granulocytes, the mast cell precursor, when it leaves the bone marrow, it will still become a mast cell precursor, but it will become a mast cell once it enters tissues. Mast cells, interestingly, contain also granules, but they are not part of the granulocyte group. Why? Well, it's because they mast cells do not circulate like the basophil, eosinophils, and neutrophils. They stay in the tissue. The other type of cell is a promonocyte, which when it leaves the bone marrow, it will become a monocyte. And a monocyte will circulate around the bloodstream, but when it enters tissues, it will become a macrophage. So in the bloodstream, it's a monocyte. In the tissues, it's a macrophage. And macrophages, as we all know, are antigen-presenting cells and it also eats up pathogens. Now finally, the myeloid progenitor cell can also give rise to immature dendritic cells. And immature dendritic cells, once it leaves the bone marrow, it will still become an immature dendritic cell. A dendritic cell role is important because it is the connection between the innate and the adaptive immune system. Its role is to enter tissues, the peripheral tissues, and then uptake antigens from the peripheral tissues and then present them as antigen-presenting cells to the adaptive immune cells. And so the dendritic cells, as, we, as I just noted, is, the, is important because it connects the innate immunity and the adaptive immunity. And we'll learn about the dendritic cells a lot more later on. Now, let's look at the lymphoid progenitor cells, which also uh, came from the pluripotent stem cell. Now, the lymphoid progenitor cell, as I mentioned earlier, typically gives, gives rise to the adaptive immune cells. Uh, this is true in a way. First of all, the lymphoid progenitor cell will give rise to two cells which are not really part of the adaptive immune system. These cells are also the immature dendritic cell, which, as we uh, talked about, is a connection between the innate and adaptive immunity. And the lymphoid progenitor cell will also give rise to an immature natural killer cell. An immature natural killer cell, when it leaves the bone marrow to the bloodstream, it will become a natural killer cell. Natural killer cell is important. They are large granulated cells which kill abnormal looking cells or abnormal cells such as tumors. And they're also important against infections. What's crazy about them or why they are called natural killer cells is because they kill cells naturally without the need of other signals from other cells. So when they see something bad, they will just kill it. Now, now let's talk about the adaptive, the main adaptive immune cells. So the lymphoid progenitor cell will give rise to um, a lymphoid precursor. Now this lymphoid precursor will then leave the bone marrow and will still become a lymphoid precursor, but it it will travel to the thymus and will mainly become a T cell. So it becomes a T cell in the thymus. So, okay, why doesn't this cell just be called the T cell precursor or the immature T cell? Well, this is because 
the lymphoid precursor can actually also give rise to other types of cells in the thymus, but it will mainly give rise to T cells because we need T cells in our body. Okay, I hope you understood that. Now, the lymphoid progenitor cell will also give rise to B cell precursors, which will express what's in the bloodstream only IgM antibodies. So now, because this is an immature B cell, it's still not activated. A B cell, when we think of B cells, we think of antibodies. Because later on, when the B cell is activated and it matures, it can become uh, two types of cells, plasma cells or memory cells which if it's a plasma cell it will be able to secrete antibodies and these are Im and these two types of cells the memory cells and the plasma cells are important part of the adaptive immune system and we'll talk about these cells later on if you don't understand it a point to make is that the the T cell the soon to be T cell and the B cell are the two important lymphocytes which are part of the adaptive immune system Another interesting thing is that the natural killer cells here, they can not only arise from the bone marrow, but they can also arise from the thymus, from the lymphoid precursor cell, which will travel to the thymus. And that's something interesting to note. But we'll just say for now that the natural killer cells come from the bone marrow. And so looking back at this small diagram, we learned how uh, the stem cell produced many types of leukocytes, precursor and immature ones, and that it will go into the bloodstream and in the bloodstream it will travel to different tissues. In the next video, part two, we will look at where some of these immune cells will travel to, the different tissues it will go to, and we'll learn about other organs which are part of the immune system and the lymphatic system.